Stark was almost blown up by his own missile, we knew our world would never be the same again. I'm not just talking about the creation of Iron Man, the MCU's iconic cinematic debut which gave us live action versions of our favorite comic book heroes. Robert Downey Jr., just like the rest of the MCU cast, is uncanny as Iron Man. I am Iron Man. The Marvel Cinematic Universe gave a new life to the comic book characters we grew up loving and significantly expanded the sheer influence of the franchise. However, this transition from a comic book panel to the screen isn't an easy one to make. From fine-tuning costumes to adapt to real-world scenarios to accounting for a film's aesthetic needs, a variety of reasons influence the final look of an MCU character. In this video, I'll be looking at some of the incredible concept art designs to show you just how some characters could have enjoyed greater pull with the audience if they had looked as good as these projections. Number 1. Ultron could have been more intimidating. Ultron was undeniably one of the biggest opponents of the Avengers, and he had insane abilities to show for it. The comic book version of Ultron is in fact so powerful that director Joss Whedon actually took some of these powers away to keep movie Ultron grounded. The outcome was still a very potent sentient robot that gave the Avengers a good run for their money, but Ultron could have looked far more menacing. Some unused concept designs of the super villain drawn by Phil Saunders show us exactly how. In Phil's versions of Ultron's head, touches of molten red ominously glow through the lines on his face to form natural expressions. His other concept, called the Mega Ultron, shows a scaled up version of the bad guy that looks like it could swallow the Hulk in one gulp. What we saw in the movie instead was a far more mechanic villain and a swarm of his replicas. While this helped in highlighting the tactical pitfalls of an AI gaining sentience, these alternate versions could have helped Ultron look less like a pissed off robot and more like, well, Ultron. With the benefit of hindsight. Number 2. Iron Man's Armors even though Tony Stark's wit and capacity for innovation are highlights of the MCU films, it wasn't until Iron Man 3 that we saw the full range of his arsenal. The house party protocol was especially a sight to behold, but like every fan, I'm still yearning to see more of Iron Man and his armors. One of them is the bullet armor, conceptualized by Josh Nizzi. It's an interesting change from the ones we're used to seeing, especially since the name implies a super fast functionality. It's quite similar to the shotgun armor that was briefly seen in the movie though, which maybe explains why it wasn't in the movie. I also really like the initial design of the hammerhead suit that was released recently. It looks more sleek than the bulky one we barely got to see in the movie. Some of you might recognize it as the MK37 hot toy model sitting on your shelves before Iron Man 3 was even released, and that's because it was designed during the production of the first Iron Man movie. Number 3. Smart Hulk's Deleted Outburst Infinity War didn't have a happy ending, but it could have given audiences some redeeming moments if one scene hadn't been cut out. I'm talking about Bruce Banner's much-awaited transformation into Smart Hulk. I know, it's crazy. I'm wearing shirts now. Out of all the Avengers, Bruce's existence is perhaps the most painful one due to his fraught relationship with the Hulk. Reconciling the separate personalities of Bruce and the Hulk is significant to his character arc in the MCU, but it sadly didn't get the mileage it deserved. Smart Hulk was supposed to emerge in Infinity War when Bruce was in the Hulkbuster suit fighting Cull Obsidian. The concept art for the scene shows an epic moment of the Jade Giant ripping out of the Hulkbuster armor to defeat Obsidian. The writers, however, revealed that this part was changed because it didn't go well with the mood of Infinity War. As a result, we never got to see the actual actual process of Hulk's transformation, but just its result in Endgame. What could have been a gritty storyline for the Jade Giant was mostly reduced to Banner Hulk explaining his condition to Ant-Man and inducing a few giggles from the audience. Did you get that? Number 4. Nebula and Gamora Nebula and Gamora make really fun characters to design given that they both belong to different alien races. A quick look at the comic and concept art origins of the sisters shows that their on-screen versions were considerably toned down. One valid explanation for this is the extensive makeup requirement of the roles, but it would still have been nice to see some of these features make it on screen. Andy Park's early designs, for instance, show Nebula's cybernetic features more prominently. It's worth noting, though, that Karen Gillan's complex prosthetic 
makeup would take more than four hours to apply, which is an incredible feat in itself. Andy's original version of Gamora is also strikingly beautiful, with intricate designs in her face coming together in a not-so-green look that Zoe Saldana would have pulled off brilliantly. It was eventually simplified for the movie, giving us the green Gamora we still came to love. Number 5. Iron Strange Robert Downey Jr. and Benedict Cumberbatch have a lot of similarities within and beyond the MCU. It would no doubt have caused a lot of excitement if Doctor Strange at some point had donned the Iron Man armor. As it turns out, the dream was quite within reach. An early idea for Infinity War actually made this iconic vision of Iron Strange come true. A deleted scene and the film's concept art stands as proof of it. Tony Stark was going to have Strange wear his armor to protect him from Ebony Maw's torture in a discarded scene from Infinity War. The whole concept even included Tony completing the epic crossover by wearing Strange's magical cloak himself. Other than the genuine coolness of this premise, it would have been an ironic nod to Tony and Strange's constantly clashing egos. Do you concur? All right, Stark. Number 6. Scarlet Witch Wielding Her True Powers Scarlet Witch is one of the most powerful heroes in the MCU. Her portfolio includes telekinesis, manipulation of energy, giving terrifyingly realistic visions, and reading the minds of her targets. Her epic fight scene with Thanos did justice to her power, but it could have been foreshadowed more iconically in the earlier films. In an unused Age of Ultron concept, for example, Wanda is seen controlling the minds of several opponents all at once. This is unlike what unfolded in the cinematic version of that scene, where she was mind-controlling one person at a time. The concept design did a much better job of highlighting the deep resentment and grief behind Wanda's epic powers as the Scarlet Witch. Needless to say, it would have made a remarkable scene for the movie. Number 7. A More Humanoids Dormammu as the Sorcerer Supreme of an entire planet, Doctor Strange is an undeniably strong MCU character. Strange understands how dimensions operate and influence the well-being of the people on Earth, so a straightforward enemy is no match for his character. That's why the bad guys he's often up against are not even in typical humanoid form. This makes them very formidable opponents, but they lack a certain vibrance on the screen. Dormammu, for example, was a multi-dimensional villain with an omnipotent eye on the entire multiverse. Doctor Strange couldn't have beaten him without cleverly trapping him in an endless time loop. These frightening qualities would have panned out with far more effect if Dormammu hadn't just been an ambiguously trippy face in the movie. He could have taken on a more humanoid form, like the one that is shown in a concept art piece by Jared Morantz. This would have allowed him to level with Strange and destroy him continuously with more cinematic finesse. Number 8. Thor in even more comfy outfits. Thor's Asgardian banter and no-nonsense heroism have always shown him in a favorable light. His superhuman swagger is compounded by his godly origins and hammer-worth likability. But Avengers Endgame flipped this larger-than-life image by giving us a more human version of Thor than ever before. The way Endgame handled Thor's weight gain was wildly appreciated for its honesty and sensibility. It was a fitting depiction of his physical and emotional response to the trauma he had experienced and the fact he didn't just suit up and shed his pot belly later in the film made it all the more legitimate. What would have been even cooler was if the movie had added a little more variety to Thor's pajama game. Wesley Burt showcased some early concepts for Thor's crock-wearing persona that would have looked just right. Some of them did make it into the final version of the film, but were not nearly as vivid as these illustrations. It's also incredible that these were even made before Thor Ragnarok had started filming. It wouldn't have been difficult to curate these looks for Chris Hemsworth Worth's wardrobe, the film also would have seemed less on the nose about Thor's weight gain if it hadn't have made him walk around his den without a shirt the way it did. What are you wearing? I always wear this. This is one of my favorites. <clears throat> Number 9. Classic Mantis Mantis had a great run in the MCU even though she was absent for much of Endgame. She was amongst the less fortunate half of the population that perished after Thanos' snap. Even with her relatively low screen time, Mantis stole hearts with her googly eyes and innocuous quirks. Beautiful people never know who to trust. Well, 
then I'm certainly grateful to be ugly. Her powers are based on empathy, despite being raised by the ominous ego, and she brings a refreshing innocence to the cosmic team. After all, other characters with evil connections didn't grow up to be nearly as cute as Mantis. We loved watching her feel her feelings and laugh with Drax in the MCU, but she looks way too simple next to Andy Park's bright original Mantis. Like Gamora, Mantis 2 had her final look scaled down, and the movies only retained her hallmark antennas and big eyes. Since the cinematic Mantis makes quite a departure from her comic book storyline, it would be fair to say that this didn't do too much damage to the character or its arc. Number 10. Black Widow donning her Ronin costume for a reveal Natasha Romanoff's death in the MCU timeline is certain, but she's all set to return with her own solo movie. Fans will finally get to deep dive into her past like they've wanted to for years, but it's unlikely that they would get to see her suit up as Ronin. That, however, could have been a very real possibility for Endgame. The Avengers Endgame art book revealed many unused ideas for character looks, and one of them had Natasha in her own Ronin-style getup. As far as the cinematic universe, Universe is concerned, Ronin is Clint Barton's alter ego. Clint was devastated after losing his family to Thanos' snap and spiraled into a vigilante killing spree. When Natasha found him in Tokyo, he had traded his trademark bow and arrow for a samurai sword and sported his darker Ronin look. She brought him back to the Avengers, but his brief Ronin stint along with the concept art disclosures raised many questions. Wesley Burke clarified that the idea of Nat and Clint's matching Ronin costumes was pure purely for added effect. It had originated for the purpose of pairing up Hawkeye and Black Widow in an action scene. The scene would have made them take their identical masks off together after snuffing out some generic bad guys. They famously fought alongside each other before, so this projected reveal would have served up some good old-fashioned nostalgic moments. Black Widow wearing the Ronin costume therefore had nothing to do with her turning to the dark side or her potential relationship with Hawkeye. The idea was a good one and wouldn't have made a significant difference to their character arcs, and for what it's worth, it would have given us the feel-good moment we look for in every MCU fight scene. That brings us to the end of the video. Which concept designs did you like the most? 